Welcome to The Warp. I'm Jack Rita. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the classic edition of flares and their non-classic counterparts and what their effects are and which ones should you use. So there are three of them. One of them comes in the base game, and that is the filch flare. And as you can see, the uh, classic edition has the little orange-reddish bar along the top to let you know that it's not the same as the regular one. And in Cosmic uh, Conflict, the Empath one was released. And then in Cosmic Alliance, the Schizoid uh, Classic Flare was released as well as its regular one. Um, so let's start off by looking at the effects. We'll go in order. So the, the non-classic version of the Filch Flare, uh, the wild effect is you may discard a negotiate card from your hand to steal any one artifact or flare as it is being played. The stolen card has no effect on its intended victim going into your hand instead. So it's a combination card zap as well as a steal of that card. And this being a wild flare, uh, you can use it once per encounter and after its effect is resolved, it goes back into your hand. And the super is you may filch any other player's used encounter card whenever you are involved in the encounter or not. Where the regular filch alien power is after the encounter, you can take the card that your opponent played and put it in your hand rather than having it discarded. So that is a pretty good effect. Um, now let's look at the classic edition of that flare. So we're going to start with a super. You may filch any other player's used encounter card, whether you were involved in the encounter or not. So that is the same. It is the wild effect that is different, and this one's a doozy. So the wild filch, and this is what the wild filch was like in the original Eon edition of the game. You may cheat and take your ships from the warp to colonies or cards from the deck or discard pile, even when you are not entitled to them. If caught in the act, you lose one ship to the warp and return the items you were caught filching. You don't have to reveal this card unless you are caught, but once it is revealed, the deck and discards are placed next to you for easy access. And that's pretty much what the effect was as well. So this is a notorious card that um, I know that when I've played with it in the past, I've ended up with a good 60 or more cards from the deck in my hand. And when you're fanning through that many cards and people go, oh, oh boy, you've got the filch. Um, and then, of course, when people don't even know that this is in the game and what it can do, it uh, it blows people's minds. It can be very divisive. Some people think that the effect is hilarious. Um, others uh, think it's utterly broken. And that is why there are two copies of it. Kevin Wilson was not terribly keen on having the You May Cheat card right there in the base game. Uh, Peter Laka insisted that they include it, and Kevin's solution was to have two copies and let the players decide um, what they're going to do with it. Um, so I'm going to weigh in here at the end. I'm going to just go through all the effects first. So next we're going to go with uh, Cosmic Conflict. So we've got the Empath, and the Empath is the alien that if one or the other player reveals a negotiate card, they can turn both revealed cards into negotiates to get into a deal situation. So... The non-classic edition of the uh, Empath Flare, the wild effect, is play this flare when you attempt to make a deal. If you successfully make a deal, you and the other player in the deal each receive three Defender Rewards. So that's, that's a pretty good effect. Um, it encourages you to make deals. The super is, as a main player or an ally, if the main player opposing your side reveals a negotiate card, you may exchange it for an attack card from your hand. Conclude the encounter as if they revealed that attack card. So that is also a pretty sneaky effect. Um, because normally, uh, you get yourself into a deal situation. Um, the allies are out. Um, or if you uh, really wanted to just get that negotiate card into your hand, that's a good way to, uh, to do it. Um, so let's look at the classic edition. So the super is, as a main player ally... If the main player opposing your side reveals a negotiate card, you may exchange it for an attack card from your hand. Conclude the encounter as if they revealed that card. So, same effect. Here's the wild. Use this flare only as a main player. For the rest of this encounter, you may remove one ship from any colony your choice to the warp from each player who does not say sir or ma'am, whichever is appropriate, 
each time they speak. So that one's a bit silly. Um, it's the Sir Ma'am card, um, which in this day and age is um, probably not adequate. Um, there's a lot more that can be going on and which is appropriate. Not always easy to tell. Um, you'd have to sort of canvas the table first to uh, get some consensus on that. Um, although that's not really why this is uh, another card uh, that has uh, two different versions. I think it was just the pure silliness of having people say, yes, sir, no, ma'am, um, under penalty of losing a ship. So I think it was just one of those things where Kevin was not terribly keen on the original effect. So came up with that. Finally, we've got Schizoid. So let's look at the, the non-classic version of Schizoid here. So the wild effect is after the end of the any encounter, you may switch home systems and therefore player colors with any other player of your choice. Afterwards, discard this flare. You don't even give it to Schizoid. You just discard it. And then the super is at the end of your turn, you may choose a card from your unused Schizoid deck and swap it with the Schizoid card on your sheet as long as this does not give any player an immediate win. And Schizoid is the alien that started the game. They choose from a cache of cards an alternate win condition, which is secret. And throughout the game, players are trying to uh, figure out which one it is through process of elimination. Um, so the classic edition of the Schizoid, the super is, if this flare is in your starting hand, reveal it and write a victory condition down instead of choosing a Schizoid card. The condition must be, one, possible for all players to meet, two, clear to all as it happens, three, not require remembering past events, and four, require at least three foreign colonies. If this card leaves your hand, reveal your written victory condition to all players. So that is wildly different from the other super. Uh, and the wild is after the end of any encounter, you may switch home systems and therefore player colors with any other player of your choice. Afterwards, discard this flare. So in this case, it's the wild that is the same through both editions. It's just the super. And the original schizoid, this is basically how the alien worked. You wrote down a victory condition that met certain criteria. Um, but now you're able to, uh, yeah, you'll be able to come up with something that is different from your schizoid cards. So that's interesting. So now we're going to take a look at where, where do I fall on these? Well, right off the bat, I tend to default to not using the classic edition, which may surprise some players since I am a longtime Cosmic Encounter player starting from the Eon days. Um, and so I'm used to some of these effects. I, I remember many games with the Filch Flare and with the Empath, yeah, yes sir, no sir. Um, not as many with the Schizoid one, but that again, that was how we played Schizoid. That's the original Aliens effect, more or less, on there. So uh, I do have fond memories, but I think overall the Fantasy Flight Edition improves upon the Eon Edition in almost every measurable way. And I prefer the changes, and I grok where Kevin Wilson is coming from on these changes that he has made. So I do prefer, and I, I default to using them. That said, every once in a while, we say, you know what, uh, let's purposely choose these. And we actually we go all in with all three of these aliens in the game and their flares. And so everybody is aware that these are in the game and this is going to happen. It kind of makes me wish that there were five more like that. And I know that on Board Game Geek, um, I'm pretty sure Bill Martinson has similar <laughs> aliens. Um, so if you do print and play and sleeve your cards and whatnot, uh, I invite you to check those out and uh, and take a look and see whether or not you would do that. But that's, that's where I fall on these. I, I go ahead and I use the other ones. I keep these um, stored separately so that they don't accidentally get mixed in. You know, you can have a game where you're like, yes, we've chosen the flare and we picked this up and now we're shuffling in some random cards. I'm like, what do we do if we've got two of these in there? Try not to let that happen because I think it's uh, it's more heartache than is, uh, is worth the uh, fireworks that it will cause. So that's where it is for me. Let me know your thoughts. Uh, which of those flares do you tend to use? Do you always use uh, one over the other. Is it true for all three of these aliens? Do you say, well, we're going to use the uh, we use the filch one, uh, but the other ones we'll just use the uh, the regular ones. This one 
probably the most famous out of the group. Um, it has most of the most memorable uh, stories told from someone having the Filch Flare. This did inspire uh, something for my reward deck that I made from my custom set, and it was a subterfuge card. And it was actually, it wasn't my idea, but I made a, a set of them. Um, each one gave you a unique way that you could secretly cheat in the game. Um, and that was an interesting thing to have in there. Um, I, I, I didn't push very hard to have subterfuge in any of the um, reward decks that I had any control over. Because um, I know, again, a lot of people, they do not like that sort of thing. So uh, I've left it out. I might stick some subterfuge cards, though, into my TTS edition. Um, but that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again soon.